divine truth frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and public. The subject of this session is spirits. This is session one. What's the difference between spirit attachment, spirit influence, spirit overcloaking and spirit possession? Mm -hmm. What happens to the person and their body in each of those different states? Right, it's a pretty big question. It so is. Um, we might need to break this question up, I think, in the future. But what Would you I'll, like... give, I'll just give a brief okay. summary of some of those things. So let, uh, the main difference in the question is the difference in degree. So we can say that the average person on earth is basically spirit influenced. Every single person on earth is basically spirit influenced until they become at one with God. And even then they could still be spirit influenced in a positive direction uh -huh. because they'd be open to receiving influence you know, that's love, from loving spirits. So they would still be spirit influenced, it just wouldn't be uh, motivated in an unloving direction. Sure. So the reality is all of us, whether we're at one we've got or not, are going to be spirit influenced. It's just how we're influenced that is dependent upon what kind of condition we're in and what we're open to in terms of our, the influence that's brought to bear. So that's this aspect of spirit influence. Then we look at spirit attachment. Now spirit attachment is when a person, a spirit, who has passed over into the spirit world, attaches themselves to the, through the spirit body of an individual living on earth to, sorry, usually it's to the physical body of, mm -hmm. a spirit, of a person living on earth. Now, these kind of attachments often occur in the womb. So they begin in the womb where the mother is not providing through, because of the mother's emotional injuries, she's not providing a protection to the child that's in the womb. And as a result, a spirit, uh, usually and quite frequently, it can be a spirit who believes in reincarnation, mm -hmm. attempts to attach itself to the body of the child that's already been conceived and who already has another soul and spirit body attached to it. And, uh, and they attach to the physical body, usually in a specific location, which is driven by the mother's addictions. And they then are attached to the person for the rest of their life, generally. And usually that spirit who is attached to the person causes the physical death of the other person they're attached to. Mm -hmm. usually through some kind of disease of some kind. And often the disease is a child onset disease. In other words, it's a, it's a disease that is triggered at the beginning or early childhood and, uh, and therefore the child doesn't survive even into adolescence in many cases. If it's a less severe attachment, right, driven by a less severe addiction, the child may live into even old age with this attachment. And and in some cases, believes themselves to be the person who's attached to them mm -hmm. until they die. Mm -hmm. And that, that you see that in many cases. With regard to a spirit obsession or possession, well, that's a, a spirit obsession, in, to me, in my mind, is a person who is obsessed with having a spirit with them. And there are many, many people on the planet who love having spirits with them because of the power and other types of emotions that these spirits bring to them. I've, said, I've met many men who are obsessed, they have a spirit with them who is obsessed with sex and, and they are completely obsessed with this spirit because they, this spirit sets up sexual liaisons for them and, and organises their entire sexual life, in fact. I've seen many people who have those kind of emotions that cause this obsession to occur. Possession is a bit different than obsession in the sense that possession is more about the spirit possessing the person. Mm -hmm. And usually a spirit possessing a person is driven by the fear, of the, the, the fear that exists in the person on earth that allows the possession from the spirit world to occur or a belief system in the person on earth that allows the possession to occur. And so possession is a, quite a common occurrence but uh, not as severe, it's often quite severe, and there, so therefore it's often well known in comparison to these other forms of influence. And then there's spirit malevolent influence and benevolent influence. So, so yeah. if we look at the malevolent influence, that's the person dropping thoughts and ideas and concepts and pictures and everything into your mind and feelings into you that cause you to make decisions that are harming your personal life. And then if there's a benevolent influence, it's a spirit who's wanting to drop different thoughts and ideas and concepts and beliefs into your mind 
that is going to help you develop in your life. So if you examine all of the different types of influence, it's exactly the same as the types of influence we could have while we're on Earth. So if, exactly the same kind of influence. If we could go through them then, because we also missed out one. So yep. the spirit influence... Which one did we miss out? Overcloaking. Oh, so over let's, yeah. let's go through them in order. Sure, and I'll, sure. Yeah. Let's do that. So influence you just mentioned. And mm -hmm. that's where someone um, is either malevolent or benevolent. Yep. And or even just um, what I would classify to be addictively connected to us. You know, it's just the average type. It's often the average type of friendship on earth or the average <laughs> yeah. type of, you know, to where, where we get something from the person. We don't always like them. We don't, yeah. you know, we don't always think they're a good person to make good, and make good decisions. But we get along with them because they meet certain of our own addictions and we meet their addictions. Yeah. 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 And that's okay. the most frequent form of spirit influence. Yes. So it could be... Uh, my friend who says, yeah, let's go shopping. Yep, let's go shopping. Let's go let's shopping. Because yeah, 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 yeah. both of us get this wonderful feeling when we've gone shopping. Yeah, both and both are addicted to the, the chemicals that occur in the <laughs> yeah, brain yeah. once you get the shopping. The bargain. The, the bargain yeah. or whatever it is yeah. that you're addicted to emotionally. Or it could be a friend who says really constructive things to me all of the time, like, hey, you should take care of yourself. And, you know, are you, are you looking out for yourself? You're not looking yourself? after yourself or you're not caring for yourself or you're not doing what you want to do or yeah. something. There's a nice person, a nice friend who who's telling you some truths about yourself that you're easily influenced by other people into a negative direction and they're trying to have a positive influence upon your upon life, you. which is fantastic. Yep, so that's um, addictive, benevolent, and then we can have malevolent, which is someone who just enjoys seeing me suffer, for example. Exactly, and, and ironically, on the planet, there are many people who are closely connected to us generally, physically, mm -hmm. who enjoy seeing us suffer. Mm -hmm. You know, there are many people in families who enjoy seeing other family members suffer. Because they feel jealous or because competitive. Because they feel jealous yep. or competitive or yep. some other reason. So a lot of these basic emotions that you see in families are not loving emotions at all. Mm -hmm. They are emotions driven by malevolence, by mm -hmm. a desire to make somebody else hurt. Yeah. And, uh, and it's very, very common on the planet to see these emotions inside of families and inside of societies. Right, so that's the examples of spirit influence mm. as using... Just generally. Just generally. Yeah. That's how spirits often are interacting with us is yes. what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, spirit attachment, that's when you mentioned a spirit could attach to me at, the, at conception. It can at happen any time during your life. Any time during my life, yeah. yeah. Any time during your life for any reason. Yeah. But, but oftentimes occurs at, at a person, during, during um, a person's during the gestational period yeah. of the of uh, after a person's been conceived yeah. to in between then and being born in that time period often spirit attachments occur depending upon the emotions of the parents because it's the parents emotions that determine whether the spirit attachment can occur during that particular point period of time and and what is the effect of that attachment they are attached to my physical body not my spirit body yes they can actually physically harm your development in the womb yeah they can harm the development of sexual organs in the womb if it's an opposite sexed mm -hmm. uh, spirit connected to the person they can harm the emotional development once they've been born. Mm -hmm. They can harm the physical development as they're growing. Mm -hmm. They can cause diseases mm -hmm. that uh, are the results of the attachment in the specific location. They can eventually cause a person's death. Though I've seen many children with leukaemia die as a result of spirit, spirit attachments. Attachment. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Which have been caused by the parents' emotions. Yeah, mm. yeah, okay. All right, so that spirit influence, spirit attachment, spirit overcloaking. Maybe if we just go back to spirit attachment for a second, mm -hmm. there's probably more that we need to say about it. it. It can usually, it does and can usually occur also when we have certain emotional things happen in our life that we attempt to deny. Mm -hmm. So I've seen it happen very frequently with people who have lived a certain part of their life up until their early 20s or late teens and, you know, they have been into drugs or some other kinds of activities They've wanted to get away from their life, but they haven't been. They haven't learned how to take responsibility for their emotions or work their way through their emotions. And as a result, what happens is they want to constantly get away from their life, and sometimes they want to get away from their life so much that they that they desperately want a person to attach to them, and basically control the rest of their life. And many times, under those circumstances, a spirit will attach. Mm -hmm. And it's like the person has a change in personality. 
right in that moment. They, their personality changes, their desires change, they do things they wouldn't normally do, they don't do things they would normally do, uh, and that's a pretty strong indication that they're now, that, that now a spirit has attached to them and has overcloaked them completely. And when I say overcloaked, they now have total control not only over the individual's thinking process and the, and the decisions that they're making, but actually over their physical body mm. and what they choose to do in their physical body, the actions they choose to take in their physical body. We often see this kind of overclocking occurring with a person who's manically depressed in their high states, where it, when in a low state, they're not overcloaked, but when they get into a high state, they're now overcloaked. They are physically stronger, generally, too. They, you know, they go from being having the strength of hard, you know, one person to having the strength of 10 people um, as a result of the spirit's energy motivating the physical body. And these are common occurrences, they're very common occurrences, and, uh, and very common occurrence in mental illness as well, mm -hmm. which is an interview we'll be doing later. So, so the, the entire process of overcloaking is an attachment that occurs that is now strengthened to such a position that the person now is willing to allow the, per the spirit to totally control all of the aspects of their life. Mm -hmm. And in fact, many times the person themselves is no longer aware or even conscious of what they're doing, mm -hmm. in fact. And um, you're saying that that can happen at stressful periods in our life? Mm -hmm. And a spirit... If we're avoiding the emotion. Yes, so yep. when we want to deny or avoid the stressful period. Yes. And how long does it last? You mentioned earlier that it could oh, last till people death. I know last until death. Yeah. But can it last for very short periods as well? It Often can. you hear about people committing a murder and they can't remember just 10 minutes. Yes, or, yes. And that could be the result of overcloaking. Yes, but again, the person on earth had to be involved in the process. They had to make some choices and decisions. They have to have some supportive emotional conditions that allow the connection to occur. Yeah. Otherwise, it could not occur sure. under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. It can only occur when the person on earth has certain sympathetic emotions with the person who's overcloaking them. So, so, but yes, a person can murder in that place. They can rape in that place. They can become violent in that place and then all of a sudden switch out of it. And this is also the cause of uh, a lot of people who have the dissociative identity type things where they flick in and out of different multiple personalities or seemingly do so. This is all a part of their, this problem. This of problem overcloaking, of basically. Of overcloaking yep. under certain specific conditions. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, the final category that you spoke of earlier was spirit possession. How does this differ from overcloaking or is this very similar? Well, in the overcloaking and in the obsession side of things, with obsession and overcloaking, it's more that the person on earth is driving the behaviour of the spirits to a degree. In other words, the person on earth is, has a codependency mm -hmm. uh, relationship, type of relationship with the spirits. The person on earth wants the connection. Because they're getting whatever, something because out. Because they're getting something from it. Yeah. Um, and, and the person on earth wants to be controlled. The person on earth wants to be a different person. They so, want to be obsessed. They I want see. to have the results of the, what the spirit who is obsessing them can give them. So if I'm a teenager who's just moved to a new school and I'm feeling really stressed out and I don't want to feel it, mm. uh, socially frightened, if I attract a spirit who wants to have an experience on earth through me, mm. who's very boisterous and outgoing... Um, and you like the idea I, of that. I, and emotionally I feel like, oh, that's a relief. Someone mm. else is going to do this hard work for me. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm getting something out of it and the spirit is getting something out yes. of it. So that's like uh, obsession or overcloaking. Yeah, well, that's obsession or attachment that can turn into overclothing. Uh, if they stay for a long time. If they stayed or if I allow the complete possession of my physical body, sure. you can now say they're completely overclothed. Sure. Yeah. And how does that differ then from possession? Possession is an, still an overcloaking, uh, usually complete in many cases, but it's where the overcloaking occurs because of the fear of the individual on earth rather than their desire. Mm -hmm. Or more specifically, we could say it's the avoidance of the person's fear. So, so the person on earth is terrified of the spirit and as a result, the person on earth allows the spirit to do what the spirit wants because they are terrified of what else the spirit will do to them if they don't allow it. Mm -hmm. So that is possession. That is the, uh, that is the desire to accede to a, the rage and, and blackmail and bribery of a spirit 
because you're just petrified of what will occur if you don't do it. So again, I'm thinking, trying to think of an example. Mm -hmm. If I'm a woman who's terrified of other women, mm -hmm. I feel that then a woman's uh, hatred towards me is just an... I'm terrified of what they'll do mm -hmm. with that, mm -hmm. how they'll make me feel or what they, actions they might even take. Or even what violent actions they could potentially perform. Yeah. Yep. So, and I'm afraid of them. And then a spirit who's And you'd like very... to stay away from them. <laughs> you'd like to stay away yes. from any type of that person. Yes, right. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, but if a spirit like that comes to me mm -hmm. and says, you should be terribly nasty to your husband. Mm-hmm. Is this working? Yes, keep going. Yes. Um, because he's just a bastard, you should cut him off. Mm -hmm. um, if I, I might not have those feelings towards my husband, mm -hmm. or, uh, but because I'm terrified of, of this what this woman, woman may do to you, will do to me if I do something other than what she wants, mm -hmm. I might still take the action. Yes. Is that an example of possession? That's an example of allowing a possession. Yep. Yep. And, and in, during in, that in, particular time, you may actually even not even be conscious of what you're doing. There are people yeah. who often say that I just had a big argument with my husband and I got no idea what I said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why they got no idea what they said is because the spirit had possessed them during that period of time. Yeah. You see people who are drunk often in this state, actually. Drunkenness often gets to the point where the person is no longer conscious of themselves anymore mm -hmm. and, and, in fact, does not even remember what they did that's a spirit from that point in time. That's a complete possession yep. that's allowed through the process of drunkenness. Mm -hmm. So the person gets so drunk that they, they, they no longer have control over their physical body and a, and a spirit instead takes control of their physical body and does things. Mm. And there are people who have lived two or three days like that, yeah. um, who, who are controlled by, can't remember, two or three days because they got so drunk. But, they, but people come back and said, oh, you, you went here and you slept with that person <laughs> and you, you drove here and you went there and you went to work actually and, yep. and they can't remember any of it. Yeah. And the reason why is during that period of time they were possessed by the other spirit who was motivating all the behaviour. And so really, um, no matter what we call it, basically there's like, as you said, it's about degrees, degrees. of influence and how much our emotional condition is allowing control exactly. of people who are in the spirit world over us. Exactly. So with all of these things, it's all about degrees. Obviously, every single person who's ever existed and who will ever exist will be influenced by spirits, mm -hmm. just like every single person who's ever lived and whoever will live has and will be influenced by a person they can see. Yeah. The, the question is whether we're going to be influenced in a positive direction or interested, influenced in a negative direction or influenced through our addictions and, and, and therefore influenced through our behaviour by supporting our addictions, which obviously support our denial of fears and other emotions. Mm -hmm. So the question really becomes then, what kind of level of influence are we going to allow? And what all of what we've just described is the varying levels of influence that people allow. So most people on the planet allow influence within social norms. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. We're too afraid to allow influence outside of the social norm. <laughs> so we only allow influence inside of the social norm. Whether the influence comes from a person we can see or a person we don't, can't see is immaterial. We're just allowing the influence within the norm. When the influence goes outside of the norm, that's when the majority of people on the planet freak out. Mm. So when the influence... So, for example, it's normal for most people when they get too drunk to not remember what they were doing. Mm -hmm. That's normal, even though it's a possession. <laughs> it's still normal. Yeah. And so we allow it. We, yeah. we don't consider it's a major problem. We don't see it as a problem even. But when a person is possessed without taking alcohol... We see that as a big problem. Yeah. <laughs> we'll even medicate such a person and put them in some kind yeah. of psychiatric institution, right? Yes. Because we see that as outside of the social norm. Mm -hmm. The reality is a person who uh, is swearing their head off and carrying on because they're angry um, is influenced by spirits, negatively, in fact. But we see that as a normal, if, particularly if it's a man. <laughs> we <see laughs> because that. we accept men's anger more we than we do women's. We accept men's anger more than we yeah. do women's generally. Yeah. So we see that as normal. So if he's there swearing and carrying on and having a big spit and, uh, and you know, doing some bit crazy things at the time, we sort of, oh, that's normal, right? Uh -huh. When the same person is a child of six years old, having a tick called Tourette's syndrome, we see mm. that as abnormal, mm. right? It's the same kind of influence 
and often for a similar reason, but, uh, but we see that as abnormal and we give it a syndrome, mm -hmm. a name, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and doing many things to try to correct it. And, and this is the issue we face, is that, is that when these things are within social norms, when these influences from spirits are within social norms, we allow them. When they're outside of social norms, then we, of course, condemn them. Now, I'm not suggesting that, out, that, that we need to do something different. What I'm suggesting is often what we believe is inside of social norms is still out of harmony with love. Yeah. And often what we believe is outside of social norms is in harmony with love. Although not always. Although not always. Yeah. So, for example, a person just crying in the middle of the street, we often see as outside of a social norm. But they're just crying in the street. They're not harming anybody. They're not damaging anybody. Yeah. And it's highly unlikely in that place if they're connected with their emotions. They're not being influenced by a spirit. But most of us will get concerned or even fearful for them. So you said state. it's highly unlikely that they're not being influenced by a spirit. You mean it's highly unlikely that they are being influenced by a spirit in that state? It's highly unlikely they are being influenced mm -hmm. by a spirit. Mm -hmm. They are not being influenced by a spirit <laughs> if they are owning their emotions. So yeah. if I yeah. said the wrong thing yeah. there, sorry. But they are not being influenced in that state, with, particularly if they are fully connected with their emotion. Mm -hmm. They could be being influenced by a nice spirit, actually, just to have a cry. Yeah. <laughs> right? But we see that as outside the social norm. Yeah. And therefore we see that, uh, and if it continued for any period of time other than five minutes, we generally see that, oh, the person needs some help now. And, and if it continues for two hours, now we think they need hospitalisation, mm -hmm. uh, which is strange, considered it's just a grief that they are feeling. And, and it's unfortunate too that mm. some things are considered to be outside of social norms that, are, that have no harm yeah. and yet some things that have a terrible amount of harm are considered to be inside of social norms. Yeah. So what I'm suggesting is in the future what we're going to have to do if we're going to deal with this problem of influence in the terms of both negatively and positively on the planet, what we're going to need to do is determine whether the influence is in harmony with love not whether it's outside of a social norm or inside of a social norm. Yeah. That shouldn't be our criteria. Our criteria should be, is it loving for this particular thing to go on? So if a person has some kind of uh, borderline personality disorder and they're yelling and screaming at people all the time and they're carrying on all the time and being hard to manage all the time and everyone around them is sick and tired of them, that's outside not only of social norm, mm -hmm. that's outside of love. Yeah. Something has to be done. Yes. Right? Yep. And um, if a person is just having a good cry in their room because they've just experienced the death of a loved one and they need to have a good cry for three months, let them have their cry. Don't try to medicate them and shut them down. That's, that's in harmony with love. Yeah. Help them believe the truth. The person's still alive. They're probably still trying to con communicate with them, actually. Help them understand the truth. That's in harmony with love. So what we need to do with all of these discussions and all of the discussions and questions that we ask in the future on the subject of spirits and spirit influence is we need to analyse everything from the position of love. Mm -hmm. If the position of love is that what is inside a social norm isn't very loving, then I suggest what we need to do is change our social norms <laughs> into being something that's more loving. So, okay. so if a person, if, if at the moment it's okay for a person to get drunk for three days and not remember anything that they did, to me, that's not very loving, either to the person or, the th or about the things they did mm -hmm. in their state. Something has to be done about that. Now, I, me saying that is outside of social norms. <laughs> <laughs> whereas, whereas a person who's crying for three days because they just experienced the grief associated with some, some event, I don't feel there's any problem with that. And that, to me, although it's outside of social norms, is actually inside or in harmony with love. Yeah. And this is where I feel we need to go with the question of spirits and spirit influence. We need to start seeing things as they really are rather than condemning one group of things because of what happens or, or arguing for another group of things just because they're inside of social norm, mm -hmm. normality. Yeah. So I feel in the future when we talk more about this question of spirit influence and, and it has a huge amount of impact upon our life, it does. And there's going to be many, many hundreds of questions that we're going to need to answer about this particular question, these, these issues. We need to come to understand that spirits are just people. They are normal people with normal problems. Yeah. They are not some kind of special, unique creation of God. They are not some kind of, you know, they don't have any more malevolence than 
a person who could be malevolent on earth or any more benevolence than a person who could be benevolent on earth, although there are many spirits that are far more good benevolent, yeah. and benevolent, more perfect, if you like, than any person on earth. Mm -hmm. And they are all people. They all want to communicate with us in some way. We, and we can benefit ourselves and we can benefit them through communication if we understand what's going on, but only if we understand what's going on. Mm. If we don't understand what's going on or we deny what's going on, the results are just going to get worse. And this is one of the main reasons why we have a growing amount of mental illness on this planet, because we're denying what's going on. And the system, the, the, the world around us, the universe that God's created, the perfect universe, is showing us we must be denying some things, denying some truth for this ever-growing problem to continue to increase as it's doing. Mm -hmm. And my suggestion is that we need to change the way we look at this, have come at it from a more experimental and open-minded position rather from a, than from a fear-based position, from a position of scientific you know, fear or a position of religious fear, and we need to remove from ourselves these particular fears and investigate it truthfully and come up with uh, you know, all of the proper, proper understandings about the law itself and how it, how it occurs and how interaction occurs. And when we do that, we'll only finish up having benevolent <laughs> spirit influence. Yeah. And, and all of the influences that occur and all of the discussions that occur will benefit everyone involved. And I think that's going to be a wonderful time when that begins to happen worldwide. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, darling. Thanks for your time, babe. Thanks, Igor, for your uh, work behind the camera there and Lena for your work behind the camera today. Thank you. Mm. Cheers.